Hello everyone, I'm Annie Gibbons and you're listening to Memoirs of Successful Women, the podcast where you get to hear candid conversations with fascinating women from around the globe who share aspects of their business and life journey, how they measure their success and what they have learnt along the way. Well, hello and welcome to Memoirs of Successful Women. Today, I'm going to be introducing you to Aldwyn Alternay, who is a mass media marketing expert. She's known as the media queen. She's a TV host, a speaker, a photojournalist and author of multiple international best-selling books. And I am so excited that we're going to be able to learn from her sharing today what 37 years in media have allowed her to do and learn and share and grow with others, uh, definitely through her PR company called Double A Expose Media. So welcome to the program, Aldwyn. Thank you so much, Annie. Great to be here. It's a pleasure to have you on my program and I'm sure the listeners are going to be so excited to hear from the media queen herself. Uh, So how about we start with what you're doing now? You know, you own a company, Expose Media. What does day-to-day look like for Aldwyn? Yeah, thank you, Annie. Well, you know, it varies from day to day. Often there are client meetings or I'm running trainings or I'm doing Facebook Lives or I'm at events. You know, there's never a dull moment, that's for sure. It's constantly moving and changing and evolving. I also do a lot of study and I I work with different mentors. So if I'm not being mentored, I'm usually mentoring. (laughs) So it it can go one way or the other. And, you know, I love learning. So I have a total uh, total quest for knowledge and for um, expanding my my view and my horizon of life and I think that's a big part of my success and why I've got to where I am is that I've consistently been learning and growing as I go I, I certainly don't know it all and in fact the more I know I feel that the more I, I don't know you know uh-huh. so it's it's uh, a beautiful world and and journey and I think that's a big thing too is just to realize that life has its ups and downs and you know there's going to be times we feel like we're at the top of the world and there's going to be times we feel like we're at the bottom and and sometimes we feel like we're going around and around circles like the roller coaster ride of life right and sometimes we feel like we're going backwards and sometimes we need to slow down to speed up yeah. And I know with 37 years in the media, it's a very fast paced world and, you know, it, it's constant deadlines, you know, working as a journalist in TV, radio and print, it's, it's go, go, go. And, you know, what can happen is that, you know, a lot of journalists will burn out. In fact, there's a five year burnout with journalists because of the stress wow of the job and often a lot of people end up with adrenal fatigue and you know I know quite a few of my my friends who worked as journalists a few of them died in their early 60s of of cancer etc so it's a pretty fast-paced life and it's really important to manage your energy when there's so many commitments and you know even outside of full-time work as a journalist with my own business I do tend to keep quite busy with what I do you know I, I love what I do and I I I love to make the most of life and you know whether that's you know self-care moments in there too you know yoga and going to the beach and things like that I think are really important as well as learning growing evolving you know working with my team it's 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 an ongoing journey and uh, so the days can be very varied, but generally speaking, I, I do a gratitude practice in the morning. Uh, I Depending what time I sleep, depends on yeah. what time I get up. And I work with my energy. So sometimes if I'm working late, um, like the other night, I just, you know, I, I worked, I, I was tired in the afternoon, I went to bed in the afternoon, then I got up at night and worked right through the night, through the morning, I was just on a roll. Yeah. And then, um, you know, and then slept in the afternoon again. So it just depends where my energy is at as to, as to how I'll work. But I do find I get quite, uh, I, I get quite productive at night time often because, you know, the, there's no distractions and I caught up on a heap of work the other night just, just doing that because I was, you know, I was motivated to do that at that time. I was energised and, and, uh, and that's, that's the thing in my, in my diary. I have a physical diary and an online calendar and I feel like there's a never-ending list of to-dos or get-to-dos, as they say. Yes. And, and 
and ticking those things off, which is why I like the manual diary. I like to be able to tick things off. Uh, always feels really good. Always feels great when I, you know, catch up on, on work, whether it's sending an email to someone or phoning someone or, you know, getting a program up online or whatever it is you know, it feels great to complete tasks and to, <laughs> to be in integrity with myself and others around that. Wow. So it's quite a journey. <laughs> it's quite a journey. I think we've learned a lot about you just in that opening um, discussion or, or introduction that one, you're a task oriented person and you just love, yeah, that's right. Um, just ticking things off and making things happen. And, and anyone who's been in business for a very significant amount of time definitely has to have that structure, has to have that, you know, you know what needs to be done, but also the flexibility. And I think tapping into your space and the longevity in it when other people do burn out, I can see how you've you have engaged that holistic practice, a lot of health and wellness. And, and, uh, and I know you're also an animal activist and you've, you know, you're very, you know, spiritual or intuitive. And so a lot of that is obviously, you know, allowed you to balance yourself in this rapid pace industry, because you know that's what it is. I often think that when I watch news reporters, you know, you've obviously got to have all this set stuff in the wings in case you have a boring news day, but then suddenly something happens and everything just goes crazy and you've got to be ready to you know adapt how does that sort of process you know that 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 must be the stress point right that you think you're in control of everything everything's been going really well you've ticked off your little list of yep um, yes I've got this happening and then all of a sudden everyone's attentions on something that you haven't prepared and you couldn't have prepared for mm. you know, how, do, how does that sort of influence a person like you who actually craves a structure and and wants to have time to have the gratitude, have the self-care, have the balance, and then, ah! <laughs> yes, yes. Well, life throws curveballs all the time, you know, whether it's media business or any other business or life. You know, life is so unpredictable in so many ways. And I think we have to learn to adapt and to ebb and flow and to have some room for movement with what may come towards us in a day, what may happen around Around us, And, you know, lately more and more I've been turning off my phone during the day because, you know, when people call you or when they email you, it's their to-do list generally that's happening. And so I find that if I'm just taking every call or every email when other people want me to, then yeah. I'm not going to get my stuff done. So I've had to learn to put boundaries around that. And some people may not like it. They may not like the fact that, you know, I don't get back to them as quick as they may like or whatever it is. But the thing is, is you have to look after yourself first so that you can help others. You have to fill your own cup up before you can help others with the overflow as they say right. and so so one way I've navigated is that sometimes there are urgent things that need to be dealt with and I guess prioritizing is a really uh, big thing for me is what are the main things I need to get done this week and then everything else can just get put to the side because there's there's no way as much as I want everything to happen now as well myself often there's no way it's all going to happen because we're human beings there's only 24 hours in a day and there's only so much we can do and, and I think while we're doing the do, I think we need to look at how we're being. And I think that's where a gratitude practice has been really good for me. Like I, I do a check-in with my team every morning and we say good morning and, and we list three things we're grateful for. We list one thing we're grateful for on the bigger scale, like it might be I'm grateful for the stars another th and then a smaller thing. So then I'm grateful for the birds and then something about me that I'm grateful. I'm grateful for my resilience. So a macro, a micro and a self-gratitude every day I think is really important. A very simple thing. It takes a few seconds, uh, but really important. And then other things that I do sometimes is I, I stretch or I'll do some uh, some yoga through the day. If I'm feeling my energy going down, I'll just do a bit of stretching and I'll just have some me time or I might do a meditation. Um, and it's not always, you know, a lot of people have these morning practices where they get up at five and then they're off exercising and they're doing this. And, you know, yeah. my, my morning, I don't have a morning routine like that. I, I go with how I'm feeling. Yes. So if, if, if I'm feeling, you know, energetic in the morning, I'll get up and I'll, I'll do certain things. Um, however, the gratitude practice remains with everything. There's that gratitude practice in the morning remains. And I do that with the team. And I think it's important for the team as well to, um, you know, to boost their energy as well, to actually have to start the day with a positive mind frame. However, 
I think also you need to listen to yourself and be in tune with yourself. And this is something I've really had to learn the last few years because as a journalist, it was very much I was in my head a lot. As a journalist, we had our set number of stories we had to do each day. In fact, when I started at the Gold Coast Sun in, in the year 2000, I was doing five stories a week at the time. Mm-hmm. By the time I left the Gold Coast Sun in 2005, I was doing 30 stories a week. Oh so gosh. basically I was just pumping out the stories. It was like a word factory. You know, it was very, very stressful. And this is where, and often, you know, big stories happen and there's some, you know, you, you're interviewing people who have, you know, been abused or they've been in accidents or there's been criminal activity or whatever it is. So you, you, often there's situations, if you're doing news reporting, uh, where there's some very stress, stressful situations. And a lot of journalists do end up with, with PTSD or post-traumatic stress yeah. disorder uh, because they they don't have the, the tools to be able to deal with the stress that can come with with drama and with shock and and dealing with those kind of situations and so that's why you find a lot of journalists will be big drinkers or big smokers or they'll be drug takers on the side or whatever it is that's their way of coping with uh you know with with what goes on in their day-to-day life often drinking drinking was a big one you know often the journalists would be would be big drinkers back in the day you know and they'd, they'd always be meeting at the pub and and doing that. Um, so for me, over the last few years, I've, I've, I've particularly been doing a lot of a lot of women's work, a lot of, you know, coming back into my body and, um, you know, doing inner child work. I've done a lot of personal development work as well. Over the last, you know, 15 years, I've invested about half a million dollars into my personal development. Wow. Um, and I've also, over the years, I've had depression. Um, I've had, you know, a lot of anger with the world. Uh, and, and I think partly this has stemmed from watching a lot of negative news growing up you know my dad always watched the news every single night you know he'd have he'd have not just one channel of news he'd have multiple channels of news going and it'd be about two hours of negative news every night and I remember one more one one day after listening to the news I, and watching I was so upset I was in tears and I went to dad dad in tears I said why is the world so cruel why are people like this and he hugged me and he said he said Alden darling that's just how the world is and also at the time I was being bullied as a kid because I was a first generation Australian in the northern beaches area of Sydney. I had Greek, Turkish, Ukrainian background. My name's different. The food I took to school was different. So I was bullied as a kid. I saw a lot of cruelty around me. I saw evidence of this cruel world that, I, that was portrayed through the media. Mm. And what happened is my dad said anger is danger. And so what would happen is I internalised my anger for many years and that led to depression. And I've since had four friends who have taken their own lives by the age of 45. And I've come to realise how fragile people can be and and how important it is to self-nurture and to reach out to others as well. And for people as much as possible, it's what I stand for now, for people loving their life and doing what they love. Because I think the more that we love our lives and love what we do, the less depression we will have. I think depression comes when we feel helpless and hopeless to do anything about what's going on in the world. And also I think it comes from also not loving ourselves and appreciating ourselves. And I think the more we can raise our vibration and and come to love, gratitude, appreciation rather than anger, resentment, grief, shame, uh, very low frequency vibrations, uh, then, you know, the more we can raise that, then the better experience of life we will have in general and the more opportunities we will attract to ourselves. So, so for me personally, there's been a lot of work I've done on myself and I continue to do, I continue to have mentors and I continue to have a, a fantastic environment of people around me as well of, of forward thinkers and people that are out, you know, wanting to change the world in some way. You know, I think that's important too, having a bigger why than just, you know, being able to put food on the table or looking after your own family. I think, I think the why, the reason why you do something needs to be a, a big vision for you to be motivated to move beyond yourself, you yeah. know, have, have someone else or something else or other people or societies or groups to, uh, to be a stand for as a, as a human being. And that's something that drives me now is wanting to see more truth and good news in the world, you know, and there are so many good news outlets now, thank goodness, we have so many good news outlets, although people may not see it if they're just watching the mainstream news. And so a big part of what I do now is educate people and, and open them up to the opportunities that are out there around all the good news networks and and good news outlets that there are out there. And so it's all about what we choose 
to focus on. If you choose to focus on the negatives and the dramas, for example, around COVID, the things we can't control, which I know certainly has been hard for a lot of people, what's been going on over the last year and a half. And at the same time, there's others that have been absolutely booming through these times and have seen the great opportunities that have come from this adversity that we've seen. And so there's always a light and dark. There's always there's always another side to every story. It's just about what we choose to focus on. And one of the biggest traps I find for people is when they get attached to what something is going to look like or how they want something to look like. So there's a great, uh, great saying in, in Landmark, I did a Landmark course years ago, and they said, be committed, not attached, right? Be committed to what you want, not attached to what it's going to look like, because that's where often people feel let down when they want things to look a certain way and they don't. So just trust the process is, is working just as it should, you know, do the best you can, of course, and then let go, you know, let go and let God, as they say, you know, so I think that's, that that's, I think that's important. And then there's another saying, you know, you make plans and God laughs, right? So, you know, so, so that's another thing to be aware of, but I think, I think overall how we do the moments in life and the days in life, I think that, you know, that makes up our life. And so to make the most of every moment, it's important to notice, notice energy levels, notice, like I, I really notice my energy, if my energy is feeling a bit low, um, then I will sometimes just take a nap if I need to, or, or do some stretching or some self nurturing. And then, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll come out of that and I'll wash my face and I'll be back into it again. Right. So taking that time to to rest and to um, to be gentle and nurturing with self I think is so important I think particularly as women women we we tend to give so much because that's in our nature our nature is to nurture and to look after all those around us so particularly as women this is something that I've I've had to learn uh, as a woman to really nurture myself and to trust myself as well to trust my own intuition and to realize that I'm not alone we're never alone you know I, I believe I believe there's angels I believe there's ancestors and energies around me I, I, I do believe my ancestors are here supporting me in what I do uh, and you know in fact scientifically we have the DNA of seven generations so we all actually have extra support Support, much more support than we actually think we do and we're never actually alone in life right we, we always have guidance there so um, you know I believe there's light energies and dark energies like the yin yang of life and I think we're seeing this unfold right now with what's happening with COVID yeah. I think there's a there's a very interesting battle between the light and dark forces that is happening right now and all we can do as individuals is I believe come from our truest source which which our truest source as individuals I believe is light I believe we are all connected through light we, we came into the world as glowing loving joyful beings and then as we've grown older many people have become shut down and become bitter and twisted and resentful to what's going on rather than breaking through that and you know evolving moving past that moving past those challenges and and opening up to what is possible mm. uh, I think that's really important so so yeah. important. So you, so being a boss, and when you said you have these, you know, daily moments of gratitude with your team, do you then, you know, I'm assuming people that you employ don't automatically have those practices. It's not something that they might do. How do they adjust? Do they go, wow, this is really cool, and they quickly see the benefits, or do they just go, oh my gosh, that's what my boss does, so I kind of go along with it? How does that work? Just someone coming into a whole new space with someone who thinks on a di completely different level. Well, they, they actually have embraced it, which is fantastic. They've, they've embraced it and they've, they haven't actually questioned it. And I think because, you know, we've been working closely and I think they, they get the importance of gratitude and, yeah. you know, I often talk about the, uh, the scale of consciousness and, you know, 700 plus enlightenment is the highest vibration we will feel as 99.9% .9 energetic beings. When we're at enlightenment, that's your highest vibration. You will feel 700 plus hertz of mm -hmm. vibration, right? And, and I think they understand the science behind it as well as, as yeah. how good it feels, as well as the feeling of it, right? They understand the logic and the, and the heart behind it. Uh, when we're in love and gratitude, we're above 500. And they're the highest vibrations is love, gratitude, peace, Excuse me. peace, joy, enlightenment, right? So the more we can get into those spaces, whatever that takes, you know, I mean, gratitude is just one thing. That's just one thing that can automatically lift it. But yeah. love, I think love is also a really big thing, as I mentioned, doing things uh, that we love. And, and yes. Bob Proctor talked about this, you know, if you want to find your purpose, just do what you love, do as much totally. of what you love. Yes. 
as you can. And so it just makes sense. It makes sense to get into gratitude as much as possible and to love our lives. And to love our lives, it means being people that, you know, is going to inspire us, inspire those around us and doing what we love to do. And, and we, know, we know when that is because when we love what we're doing, time disappears. We are in the zone, right? Yeah. And, you know, I know like for me going to the beach, I love going to the beach and I just sometimes I'll just throw myself in the ocean, even if it's just for a few minutes and I am just immediately, you know, rejuvenated and feel amazing. Yeah. Yoga is another thing that is fantastic that I love to do. I love cooking. I actually love interviewing and speaking as well. I love, I also love what I do in my business. Uh, I love inspiring people. I love connecting. You know, there's all these things that I love to do. And then the thing is, well, you know, if you if you um, you know want to monetize that, then look for ways you can monetize that. And well, that's often the most successful people you will find are those who are in their zone and have monetized their love. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And I often get su surprised when people go, you know, they they they're smashing their head against a brick wall trying to do things that they don't naturally love. You go, let it go. Like you don't. <laughs> You know, just just focus on your strengths. Fo focus on what actually comes natural to you because it shouldn't be that hard. I think many times, most of the time, we make it more complex than we need to do, which is, you yes. know, either trying things that we're not naturally great at and really wanting to be perfect at everything, the whole perfect problem. Um, or also, as you said before, just giving out too much, being overly generous, you know, se too self-sacrificial, you know, just burning mm. ourselves out, whereas we are, you know, can that's right, those people that I meet and, and as we will believe, you know, the more you invest in and, and sort of stand back um, and take some time out and, and reflect and appreciate the more energy you have for the next the next thing you're going to go into. Yes. Into. So let's tap into then what you said earlier about, you know, growing up with news. Okay, so here you are, a media queen, you're in news. And your one of your trauma, significant trauma if resulted in, in depression for you was actually being made to watch the news. And I was one of those kids as well. When I grew up, you had to sit there and watch the news. And it was often, you know, terrible. You just kind of, you know, didn't process it. And that's right. You get those comments of, well, this is the real world. And it's a hard, hard lot to bear. Plus now we're in a generation that these young children are, are watching, you know, virus you know the pictures of the viruses in the backgrounds are just so huge and moving and ready to attack you and media do do things to sensationalize it even make it bigger than you know possibly what it is so what advice do you have for those those uh, you know mums and dads listening in you know to their children is it a good thing that they watch the news should they be watching different types of news you've talked about good news channels what's all that about Yes, great question. Well, that's right. I mean, back then there was no social media, right? Back back when I grew up, no social. I mean, in fact, social media has only been around since around 2004, early 2000s. In fact, Facebook started in 2004. Um, and, you know, it's only been really less than 20 years that we've had social media. So before that, we got all our news from traditional media, from yeah. TV, radio or, or print. And so back then it was a bit tricky to find the good news because that was we were we were basically we were brainwashed through the through the media and this is happening today and there's a fantastic documentary called Out of Shadows that came out during COVID it was it actually had about 10 million views in a month and then got taken down off YouTube and this is something very interesting I'm discovering right now is that there's a lot of fact checkers that are removing information that goes against the party line or against the you know the the main meat the mainstream media, which basically I believe is a propaganda arm for the people that are really behind the politicians and behind the media yeah. and who are controlling what is going on right now. And you may call it conspiracy theory, but even the term conspiracy theory that was created by the CIA in the 1950s to knock anyone who spoke against the government. And right. this is not a new thing. This has been happening for years that people have been put down, persecuted for speaking up and stepping up. In fact, my own ancestors were, uh, were I had my great grandparents were killed in the Ukraine. They were, they were Kulaks. And when Stalin took over and turned communist, he killed off all the Kulaks as a class, which were basically rich land owners that were farmers uh, they got hung out the front of their house because they wouldn't get off their land uh, minus 20 degrees outside and my 
their son or my granddad was in another part of the Ukraine at the time, started, started to speak up against the government. And then his friend said, you better get out of here now because now they're coming to kill you as well. And so he ran away to Turkey, met my dad's mum, who was Greek. So hence why I have Greek, Turkish, Ukrainian blood. And I was born in Sydney. So truly multicultural. So we've seen this happen again and again over time where people have been killed or persecuted for or in fear of their lives mm. for speaking up, speaking their truth. Right mm. now, as I say, I do believe my ancestors are here supporting me in this journey. And now we're at a very fortunate time with the mass media that we have so many different media channels out there. And mm. I always question if something is being censored, why is it being censored? If there's nothing to hide, then why is information about things like vaccinations, like 5G? I did a video on 5G on my balcony, got taken off YouTube that they said wasn't true. And that was where it was showing the um, frequency of the, the 5G tower that went up at the end of my street during lockdown. Uh, this I had a guy at the front of my on my balcony here with a with a meter reading um, device, and he said, "Now the safe levels of five G are two on this device, and this actually went to over twenty two on on his device. So wow. safe was two, it went to over twenty two, and this got taken off 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 YouTube, right? Yeah, which is really interesting. Why interesting. these fact yeah. checkers coming out of the woodwork? So there are alternative channels such as BitChute is one of them, B I T C H U T E, where you'll see alternative media. There's another one called Brand New Tube, which is like an alternative of YouTube yeah. as well. Uh, there are things such as now the Good News Network. There's Sunny Skies News. There's Happy News. There's Positive News. There's actually a whole lot of alternative websites as well as podcasts there's so many different podcasts now there's in fact 2.2 million podcasts worldwide mm -hmm. in 2018 there were only 500,000 podcasts oh. so now we're seeing a lot of people creating their own content now which and a lot of it will often go against what we're seeing in the mainstream yeah. media because right now and I always say if something is being bombarded the same message bombarded again and again and again then follow the money trail if you really want to know what's going on, right? And right now we're seeing it. Get the jab, get the jab. Let's open up again so we can get the jab, get the jab. So, you know, and all that. We're just, we're hearing it again and again. And if people choose to do that, that's their choice. However, please do your own research first. And you're not going to be able to do your own research if you're watching the same mainstream media channels. Yeah. And so look online for positive news or truth news or freedom of information news. And you'll find so many different channels out there. And then what I think is important once you see these other media sites out there is actually to just watch what's happening out there without actually, and same with the mainstream news as well, watch it without actually being drawn into the drama of it. I think that's the big trap because it's important to know what's going on with the mainstream media and alternative media to observe what's going on and then to sit with yourself and do that inner work and just and and feel how that what feels right to you because our intuition is so incredibly powerful that you know especially as we, you know women we are very tuned in uh, and I know some guys are out there too have women naturally a lot more generally tuned in to our intuition than uh, than many others out there and so tap into your intuition, what feels right for you. And now I knew the minute that COVID happened, I knew there was something not right about COVID. I knew it when I saw it on the mainstream because I saw the same thing over and I thought, I thought, oh, here we go. What's going on here, right? What's going on here? And we saw similar kinds of things happen with the Spanish flu. And if you look back at the history of what happened with the Spanish flu, there's actually very interesting similarities because history repeats itself and we're starting to see uh, some very interesting turn of events happening right now. And so while all this is happening, these things we can't control we can control how we're going to be about it and what news we're going to choose to you know to listen to and, and absorb and what we're not going to because the trap is here a lot of people watching this news and they're getting very frustrated and angry and upset which is lowering their vibration which is then yeah. lowering the vibration of all the people around them when they get into those anger states you're sitting below 100 hertz when you're in anger right anger frustration sadness 100 and below on the frequency scale so getting conscious, if you're, if you're vibrating at that level, you're bringing all the energy down around you, which is going to actually make you sick, right? You're actually going to make yourself sick. The fear of COVID itself is actually going to make people sick, right? So it's actually just getting conscious to that and just looking at alternative sources. And where this started for me is I had a, a friend a few years ago. He said, oh, you know, 9-11 was an inside job, don't you? I said, what do you mean 9-11 was an inside job? And I, I just didn't believe it. I thought, no, that's crazy. You know, I saw those planes going to the, how many times did we see those planes going to those towers, right? About a million times, which is now like about 20 years ago now. 
Um, and I remember I was in the newsroom when I saw it and I was, I was in shock. I was like, oh, my goodness. And, and, when, and I said, what do you mean? And he said, he said, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. I started to watch all these documentaries and all, and I was blown away. And then I started to do some research on YouTube and I saw all this footage that was never shown in the mainstream media. And I thought, oh, my goodness, wow, or why, would, why would a country do that to its own people? Well, you know, of course, the war on terror started after that, didn't it? What actually happened as a result of 9-11? Now, you know, do your own research on this, of course. I'm not saying what I'm saying is the truth. However, ever since that happened and I opened my mind to potential other uh, stories, apparently the buildings were insured for three times the value before the buildings went down. Uh, apparently the press release is ready to go out before the actual night, before 9-11 happened. And this is the thing is a lot of the people running the world are actually sociopaths and psychopaths, uh, which, you know, and for sociopaths and psychopaths, for them, they don't care if they kill other people. It's all about, it's all about them and and it's about greed and about controlling the world and all that sort of thing, right? And so it's really interesting where times where times we're in. And this is where, thank goodness for alternative media, um, and even YouTube back then, YouTube had alternative footage, but YouTube lately has been a lot more censored, as has Twitter and as has Facebook, and they've had increasing pressure to, to actually follow the mainstream line um, by, I believe, the powers that be. And we've seen people killed for speaking their truth over time, such as JFK, Martin Luther King, John Lennon. People even believe Michael Jackson and, and Prince were actually killed because they started to come out with information about chemtrails and alternative information that we were not seeing in the mainstream media. So it's very important as much as I, you know, I help people get publicity, you know, thank goodness there's millions of different media outlets out there. And, and in saying that, there's a lot of great journalists out there that are doing the best they can. Hmm. What I'm talking about is that the people that run the media channels, that they have hidden agendas and they have certain ways and means that they're, they're pushing certain angles. And we see that because we're not getting a balanced point of view through the media. At the moment, we are not getting balanced through mainstream media. We are seeing the same message again and again and again. And this is where this Out of Shadows documentary, which is all about the brainwashing that happens from Hollywood and from media channels, very, very interesting documentary, which you will find on some alternative media platforms, Out of Shadows documentary. I highly recommend you watch it, that you'll actually be, you'll start to see as you open your mind to what's going on and to alternative points of view that you can make up your own mind from there. But, you know, please do your own research. A lot of people are not doing their own research. They're believing everything they hear in the mainstream media. And, you know, as a result, they could be making choices for themselves and their family that is not going to be conducive actually to good health, although it may seem like it is for the benefit of your health right now. We have seen a lot of people who've been getting the jab, for example, have been, you know, getting very sick. A lot of people have, some people have died. So there's some, it's, it's like Russian roulette, if you ask me. I mean, you know, each to their own, if they choose to take and I've had family members that have actually you know chosen to to take the vaccine and I as much as I warn them against it I I'm concerned about what may happen from here because I have heard all sorts of stories about uh potential side effects even a few years down the track however they've chosen to do it for themselves and I and I have to respect that right after that's their choice they've they've done that for themselves that and they feel good about that so that's fine and at the same time I don't believe that I should be forced to take it for my body because I know that I potentially would react. And in fact, I had a tetanus shot 25 years ago that I reacted very badly to. I had sciatica right down my left side and I still feel the effects of that to this day. So I know that I am very sensitive when it comes to any foreign substances going into me. Um, so, you know, this, oh. and, that, and that's the big agenda being pushed clearly right now. It's very topical, the whole, you know, the whole uh, vaccination uh, debate. And I'm not, you know, I'm not anti-vax. I think I'm pro-choice. That's what I'm pro-choice. I think it's important people do their own research for themselves and and feel comfortable in their decision from that. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I think it's all about people feeling comfortable in their decision, you know. So yes. I'm quite happy to go, yeah, I'm double vax now and I've made that decision. I'm, I'm fine about that. Our whole family did. Uh, but it's all about saying there's no right and wrong. You've got to explore. Yeah. This is all about saying this conversation is all about saying, 
just look a little bit further. Not, you know, we're talking news, but in all sorts of things, you know, we could be talking about your responses, your behaviours, your decision making, the people who influence you in any different sphere. We're just, we're, we're putting it onto media. And, and what you're telling me is, you know, we're in Australia here. We've got a lot of US followers on this podcast, uh, but our, you know, primary channels, 7, 9, 10, you'll very much get the same news um, given to you every, every night and it is always of a, a very strong sort of um, very influential I'll say. Uh, so are you saying yes. as a media expert then if you were to work for one of those commercial channels you very much are told this is our angle this is our positioning this is just the, the news that you have to give. There is no ability for you to present it in a different way without you know losing your position or being reprimanded. Yes, well, as journalists, we're meant to be, you know, presenting both sides of the story. Okay, that's However, why you do a communications that, degree. That's, that's what journalists are meant to be doing. However, there were times definitely as a journalist that I was told to go out and get angles that were not there. And sometimes if you're controversial as a journalist and if you speak too much of your own mind and you don't go with what, what the powers that be want, then you will potentially lose your job or you'll get put into a different position or, you know, so... You know, and there are things like opinion pieces, but, you yes. know, again, they are censored. They go through, once a journalist does a story, it goes through an editor, a sub-editor, and then, it, you know, it goes through a whole process. So, uh, so unless it's independent media, you're not really hearing, I believe, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. You're hearing, you're hearing a lot of agendas being pushed in the mainstream media. And there were times that major things would happen and, and the news would get syndicated right across all the media, you know, that, that the, this is the wire news that comes into all media channels. So regardless of what's happening on a local scale, we'll see the same news. Like it happened with 9-11. 9-11 happened and the same news was syndicated everywhere, all over the front covers of all the papers and, you know, so so it's just important to um, to sort of look at look at the news in a um, a more objective way and just and just to sort of say, well, you know, isn't it interesting that that's happening right now? Just start to notice because a lot of people are not noticing. They they buy into the drama of it all and think that the whole world is like that. Where actually, exactly. there's a lot of people out there doing phenomenal things. You know, there's so many positive stories that we could choose to focus on right now, mm. and yet. What are we hearing? The same old thing again and again and again. And it's basically, you know, I believe it's 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 continual brainwashing. And if people don't realize they're brainwashed unless they can step back for a moment and sort of look at the situation objectively and and just sort of say, wow, isn't that interesting? You know, isn't it interesting? The same news is coming across all the different media and not just now, it's been happening for years. It's yeah, been happening, yeah. over, you know, the, the Martin Bryant situation with the shootings, you know, the, the Chappelle Corby, the all, so many, so many different news over time that we've seen the same thing again and again and again bombarded through the media and my concern is too because you've got to get it out so quickly you know there's that pressure of something's broken you've got to respond you've got to have your position so that immediate response which is you know arguably not going to be as factual as accurate as something that you've done an in-depth study and prepared to present yes. uh, then gets taken it's very hard to then change that story or some people I'm sure then you'll get the lazy people who'll just believe someone else has broken something so you take it as a truth uh, I think that could easily happen yes. I found one thing that I've done is very much you know just turned off the visual you know by reading news or that's right looking at things from a diff few different places platforms has definitely helped my objectivity because I'm not watching you know even the tone of voice that they use the sensational language the you know the virus pictures swirling everything's out to get you all yeah. of that you know the way they set up a story you suddenly can just read a bit of you know context and you can fly through all of that and just pick out the main bits and then you can then research okay well considering that's what I've brought out how do I feel about that so um yeah, yeah. That's just, just a little tip from me if you're getting a bit overwhelmed and I think definitely I mean my five kids are young adults now but if they were younger uh, I definitely wouldn't be having them immersed by day in day out you know this 24 7 on on any one particular topic too it sways your your mindset on to you know and your your mental health definitely yes absolutely uh, and and it's not just the news it's all the tv series it's the movies like last night i looked at the tv 
guide, there was one thing about a mass murderer. There was another about a crime thing. There was no, like even, you know, there was Terminator. There were like, you know, violence. Drama, drama, know, drama. The, like yeah. really it's not just new. This is, and this is what this Out of Shadows covered is this is actually coming out of Hollywood. This is brain, this is, this is brainwashing on a mass scale with, with you know, TV series. Hollywood blockbuster movies. There's not too many happy news stories you'll see in Hollywood generally. Like you look at the movies, a lot of them, there's a lot of violence, a lot of anger, a lot of, you know, this is why I love comedies. You know, occasionally you'll see a comedy and that's fantastic. And comedy is really, really, really good for you. <laughs> but, but you know, 90, 90% of it, I would say, is very negative. And is that because negative sells? Is that because we're now expecting That's what they say. That's what they say. They say bad news sells or if it bleeds, it leads. This is what we've been conditioned to believe. And actually, if you look at it neurologically with the brain science, okay, we have the hind brain, which needs to be aware of dangers, right? Our hind brain, the survival brain, we need to be aware that a fight or flight situation can happen. So it's true that we need to be aware of dangers. However, we can choose not to live in that space. If you are thinking that the whole world is, is full of drama, then why even why even bother living? Why? And that's this is why we have a million people a year taking their own lives, and even more now with COVID, right? This is a serious mental health issue that's happening right now you know this is not this is not about your just your physical health going on right now this is a serious mental health issue with the shutting the sh- lockdowns and and even wearing a mask is very debilitating for people you know it's like you're being told to shut up and to distance yourself from other people which is just it's not natural <laughs> it's not we want connection as human beings yeah. and so while we've been taught to believe that because the powers that be i believe it, it's about if, if they can have people living in fear, they will be able to control them. So it's about, you know, divide and rule, divide and rule. You can, if you have people in fear, they are much more easier to control. Yeah. However, the biggest selling book of all time is the Good News Bible, 5 billion copies plus sold, right? And if you think about, and I'm not religious here in any way, I do believe in a God or a higher consciousness, you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I was brought up Christian, but I'm not preaching any religion here. I'm just saying, isn't that interesting that the biggest selling book of all time is the Good News Bible? And we have the Good News Network and Sunny Skies, all these other news channels now that are starting to really grow in popularity, as as well as freedom of information platforms like MeWe, Gab. There's so many. B2 to Advocate is one of the, is the oldest newspaper in uh, Queensland that is positive positive news. Uh, there's a lot of different news channels. There was a happy newspaper in the UK that went viral during COVID. Mm-hmm. So there, a lot of people are, are wanting more positive news. They often just don't know where to go to look for exactly. it or they don't even they don't even think to look for it. But if you think about how you do life, the people you want to hang out with, you generally want to hang out with people who are going to lift your energy, who are going to, you know, be positive Absolutely. generally. You don't, yeah, you yeah. don't want to hang out with miserable people unless you want to have a pity awesome. party or something, right? So... <laughs> You know, generally we we are drawn to the light. We are drawn to more positive things as human beings. As if you think of kids, kids aren't drawn to negative kids, no. are they? They're, they're, you know, and this is this is we we're all kids at heart, right? We're all, yeah. you know, big kids. And so, you know, coming back to that that innocence and that beauty within us and that magnificence that we are as human beings and realize that we are all connected and and it's important to rise above the drama that is happening right now. And how do we rise above it? We raise our vibration, we raise our energy, and we come always from a loving space because hurt people hurt people. Yes. Hurt people hurt people. So if people are being nasty to you or or around, they're most likely hurting. So just send them love, send them love, and, you know, and keep going about your way. But generally speaking, most people say they want to be happy. That's what people say. I want to just want to be happy in life. If you want to be happy, then raise your vibration. Do what you love. Do more of what you love. And if you want to get your message out there, there's lots of different ways to do it. And there's lots of also positive news sections also in the mainstream news, which is interesting. So Channel 7, Channel 9, ABC, they actually have good news sections as well on their websites. You'll see news.com.au has a good news section there. Yeah. So you will find even the good news, even amongst the mainstream news. But generally speaking, the first thing people hear is all the drama, yeah. right? And then you might get a tiny little bit of good news right at the end somewhere, right? Yeah. So, however, you can actively choose to go to the good news sections 
on online, right? If you look up Channel 7, Channel 9, Good News, you'll find the good news sections on the on the internet and then focus on that. Watch a bit of that every day, you know. Use that as a bit of meditation and to lift your spirits and about the world because it's not all doom and gloom out there. As much as there is a lot of drama happening, there's also some phenomenal things and things can always be worse. Things can always be worse. So, so let's be grateful for what we have on a day-to-day basis and the more you raise your vibration, the more media you will be able to attract and the more opportunities you will attract yes. as well and that's just you know quantum physics and and science right lift your vibration you will vibrate at different level frequencies and you will attract more of that into your life so okay. well, uh, very I important we settle we, we settle for oh that's just the way it is you know you like your dad's view like my dad's view was you know and that's like oh well well we well with us well is the news you know and so whereas once you've actually risen above that and go yeah but you know there are still terrible things happening in the world and I need to be aware of those and I need to be considered in how I feel about those and, and will respond to them. But there's also um, incredible opportunity to tap into, you know, incredible people and things that are happening in the world. And that's why I love having these conversations. I meet people all around the world who are doing incredibly inspiring things. And it really does, once you start feeding off that, you sort of go, yeah, okay, well, I can I can hear the, the you know, some, some bits of, of, of sadness or challenge, uh, but I don't have to dwell in that well all the time, right? I can yes. still, uh, it's easier to be intentional to go, okay, but I want to stay balanced. In fact, I want to stay on the side of positive and growth and inspiring, uh, which is obviously what you do. So how do you yes. use your position now then? You know, it's been great that you've had a career. You know, you've done a whole lot of things. I can see in your bio, you've worked in radio, you've interviewed a lot of people, TV, um, you know, being at yes. journalism, print, the whole works. How do you then, um, you've got the dream, right? Because you've followed your purpose and your passion and you've yes. made it into your own business. How do you yes. now use that opportunity to really Really, you know give out the best version of media that that you have to give yeah well thank you for that well I, I love helping people share their positive news stories in the media and that's my real point of difference is I help people get positive free publicity and as I say there's literally millions of media outlets out there you don't need to be in millions of media outlets right ideally you can focus on the media where your ideal clients are going to be so there's several ways that I help people with that I do a free event every month called the free publicity secrets masterclass Mm -hmm. where I have an awesome formula it's in the shape of a wand my seven step awesome formula I've got my magic wand right here. Lovely. My me, my media magic wand, and this is uh, my awesome steps I cover on how to get publicity uh, from my 37 years in the media of of working in TV, radio, print. They're the same principles that apply if you want to get free publicity for the right reasons. Yeah. <laughs> don't, have to, don't have to smuggle drugs out of Bali to get publicity, <laughs> although, although that has worked very well for Chappelle Corby. But um, uh, you know, I teach people how to share their story and their uniqueness because everyone has a story. Often we're too close to our story to see what the story is. So I show people with my four-hour masterclass how to get free publicity. And I also have a mass media mastery program that people who want to work closer with me, that we do that and we help craft their message and get clear on their branding uh, and, and get them out there that way. So there's actually quite a lot to look at when it comes to media. It's not just a matter of, you know, putting a press release together and getting it out. I mean, that is a, that is a big yeah. part of it. However, we also need to look at your overall brand and your overall image right across the board so that when people Google you, you know, are you Googleicious? <laughs> You know, oh, what, great word. Yes. what are people going to find when they Google you? You know, is there going to be consistent messaging right across the board? And, you know, it's important to be on social media because that is the most immediate media. And journalists are looking to social media all the time for story ideas. So yeah. if you don't like social media, well, I suggest get over that because that's where the people are. You know, and even though there's fact checkers on Facebook and Twitter and, and uh, YouTube, a lot of people now are going to LinkedIn. Right? A lot more people are doing things on LinkedIn because it hasn't got that kind of censorship, yeah. which is really interesting. And MeWe is an other platform as well there's there's a lot of other platforms now starting to open up of course instagram's owned by facebook um uh, WhatsApp is owned by Facebook, so now a lot of people are using Telegram. Uh, you can also use DuckDuckGo as a search engine, which is an alternative uh, search engine where you'll see different information when you go into DuckDuckGo as opposed to using Google, which is also an interesting experiment to do mm. is to look on DuckDuckGo. So there's certain things I 
do with the there's a free publicity secrets masterclass. I have a, a, a global good news challenge that is also on every month. That's something that anyone can get involved in. It starts on the first Monday of each month. It's a yeah. Facebook Live challenge, and it goes for as many days as whatever num number month it is. So we have October being the 10th month. We have a 10-day Facebook Live challenge starting on the 4th of October. And people can do their 10 days of Facebook Lives anytime between the 4th of October and 10 days after that, which is the 13th of October. And all it is is a very simple Facebook Live where they just share their name. You just share your name, what you do, three things you're grateful for, and a piece of good news. It's a very, very powerful way to lift your vibration. Yeah. And, and people will also from that be able to um, get business from that. A lot of people have actually been using it as a way to promote what they're up to for their good news, which is yeah. interesting. It wasn't, wasn't designed that way. It was designed to lift the energy on the planet and to decrease depression and suicide rates. Uh, so that happens every month. A great way with the good news, you know, you can share what a client's up to or what you've got coming up. So that's the Global Good News Challenge. Also, I have physically now we're doing events on the Gold Coast called the Star Maker Masterclass, which is teaching people how to present and produce videos like a superstar. So I have a physical event now, Star Maker Masterclass, with a filmmaker friend of mine who's doing a film yeah. called The Darker Side of Paradise, Peter Turner. So we do that every month. And then I also have my mass media tribe meetup. So we have different marketing speakers that come to that. And the next one of those is coming up on October 6. We have Jeff Harrison coming to us from Holland, and he is going to talk about streaming media being the future of global broadcasting. Last month, we had one on podcasting. So we have different topics each month. It's a free event for two hours uh, from 12 till 2 Australian Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so there's several events that I, I do ongoingly to stay connected with people, to share inspiration, to encourage people to, to step up because we're yeah. not in life in general, particularly in Australia, we have this glass ceiling, we have the tall poppy syndrome, and it's about time we smash that thing down and we, we move beyond it because, you know, a lot of people just do not have the confidence to step up with their story or their message. And this is why the number one regret of the dying is living a life not true to yourself, exactly. right? And, and so the more you step up with your message and with your truth and with your love and what you love to do, uh, the more you can, you know, and look at those areas of your life where you've had challenges and how you've overcome those challenges. There's usually absolute gold in those moments. So, yeah. you know, finding those moments and looking at what you do now and how you help people. There's so much that we can share uh, with others about our story or about what we do. And journalists are looking for stories all the time. And so here we've got people wasting money on advertising where they can get free publicity <laughs> and and make such a bigger impact. It's worth three to eight times more in value to have free publicity where a journalist does your story as opposed to paying for ads. Oh, and even with sure. even, even digital ads now, you know, people are wasting a lot of money there. Only about one in four people I speak to are getting great results from their Facebook ads or, you know, which is worse this year than it was last year too. So things are constantly changing. However, what has remained the same is that people love to hear other people's stories. Yes. And people also love to know how you can help the wider community with what you do, which is what journalists are looking for. How do you help people with what you do? So I show people, I've got nine angles that I cover in my, my free publicity secrets masterclass where I talk about ways that we can come up with angles for what you do and how you can package that up and get it out so that journalists will want to do your story. And in fact, you'll be helping them when you package up what you do exactly. effectively. You actually help them with their job and they love you and they'll come back to you looking for more publicity and more stories to write about you. Fantastic. So how do our listeners find you then, Baldwin? So the best way is to go to Linktree. I love Linktree. It's got all my links on it. I've got about 50 different social media links. So yeah. all of them are on Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E forward slash Aldwin. Uh, also, if you follow me on Eventbrite, you'll see the Eventbrite link in there. Just follow me there. You'll get all our event updates. Um, and we have the Mass Media Tribe Facebook group, Meetup group. There's a whole lot of different links in there that they can connect. So if you just go to the Linktree one, it'll show you all of them. And then you can just connect wherever you want to connect. And, Listeners, you know, I'll be putting that on my platform. Uh, so it'll be on my website. It'll also be on my YouTube channel uh, as you're tuning into this episode. I've checked out Aldrin's uh, link tree. It is extensive. She's got so many things happening and uh, so many opportunities for you to get engaged with. And, you know, for not, not a lot of money, just to, to really be able to, um, yeah, take action to develop yourself and to grow yourself and also just to learn about uh, things in a different way. And what I've heard today through our discussion is that that's right social media is not the enemy you've got to embrace it but you've just got to be aware a lot of this is awareness 
appreciating how things work and then taking some ownership own your yourself and own your own the way um, you get influenced by different things and actually go no I'm gonna I'm gonna work around that by still embracing it for for the goodness that I can find and and utilize and just be aware of those things that can subtly influence you or things that you might not have thought about before that you can suddenly have a fresh perspective so thank you so much for being on my program today it's been so interesting and uh, yeah I wish you you all the best in your future success uh, with your incredible business and those people that you serve. Thank you, Annie. It's been a great pleasure to be here. And thank you so much for watching this or listening wherever you are in the world too. And I do encourage you to, you know, Gandhi says, be the light, be the change you wish to see in the world. Gandhi says, be the change you wish to see in the world. And I say, shine bright and light up all those around you. Thank you so much, Annie. It's been an absolute pleasure. So great to be here. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Memoirs of Successful Women. You can find me at anniegibbons.com where you can download my free resources, get connected on social and check out my online magic transformation program. If you love this show, feel free to subscribe to future episodes and, of course, share it with your friends. I'll see you again soon and until then, happy podcasting.